Hi, welcome to the Doctor's Kitchen. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be talking about all these terms like vitamins and minerals and antioxidants. What are they? How do they relate to each other? Why are they so important for us? So the aim of this video is to give you a broad understanding of all these different terms without going into too much unnecessary detail. Let's start at the top, nutrition. This is anything that you put in your body to allow it to survive and grow. We broadly categorize these into two subjects, macronutrition and micronutrition. Macronutrients are things like proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. These are needed in large amounts to form the structure for our bodies, the muscles, the energy source. This is a massive subject in itself. I'll do another video on that side because it's quite controversial, particularly with fats. Today, let's focus on micronutrients. So these are things like vitamins and minerals that we need in minute amounts, but they are just as important as the macros. And in this subject, I want to talk about antioxidants and something quite dear to me, phytochemicals. Vitamins, these are organic chemical compounds that we either don't make enough of in our body or we don't make at all. Therefore, we need to get them from food. What causes some confusion about vitamins is that a vitamin doesn't necessarily mean a specific molecule. The term vitamin actually means any chemical compound that has that certain vitamin activity in the body. So let me give you an example. Vitamin A is required for immune function, fetal development, eyesight, but we can get vitamin A activity from different sources in our diet. We get beta carotene from plant sources, that has vitamin A activity. And we also have retinol that we get from animal products, that has vitamin A activity. Also, those terms can be used interchangeably. So some people might be talking about vitamin A and say beta carotene in the literature. Let me give you the bigger picture. There are 13 different vitamins. Some dissolve in fat and some dissolve in water. Why is this important? Well, we're less likely to become deficient in the ones that dissolve in fat because we can store them. Whereas the ones in water, we excrete in our urine on a daily basis. So we need to replenish them more often. These 13 different vitamins are involved in a whole host of functions in our body, including enzyme activation, collagen production, antioxidant function that we'll talk about a bit later. I could go through the entire list of vitamins and regurgitate to you all the information about what their function is, why they're important, but that would be incredibly boring for you. What I've done is attach some really good evidence-based links that I use all the time about the function of vitamins and their new uses as well in medicine. What I like to do in my videos is as we use ingredients with certain vitamins, I talk about their functions as we go along and the new research behind them. Minerals, where vitamins are organic chemical compounds, minerals are chemical elements, so they're less likely to be degraded by things like cooking and boiling. Again, they fit the same criteria and we need to assimilate them from our diet. Based on the amount that the body requires, we divide these into major and trace minerals. These minerals, again, have a multitude of functions, including water balance, blood cell production, cognitive benefits, blood sugar regulation. Again, I've attached some really good evidence-based links if you did want to find out a little bit more information about them. And we're constantly learning more about how they're important in disease prevention and disease treatment as well. Don't worry or stress too much about the individual impacts of all these vitamins and minerals on the minutiae and pathways and how it impacts on specific functions in the body. What I do want you to grasp is the bigger picture for diet in general. And these are your take-home messages. Be supplement wary. Only supplement if you discuss it with your doctor or you have a specific deficiency because minerals in particular work in antagonistic pairs. That means you could be supplementing one and it could be counterproductive to another. Calcium supplementation can reduce your magnesium. Zinc supplementation can reduce your copper. Without sounding too much like a hippie, there is synergism in nature. I'm much more of a fan of obtaining your vitamins and minerals from diet because in nature, these micronutrients are presented alongside their synergistic partners. Also, unless you're literally eating bucket loads of vegetables and fruit, you're very unlikely to cause a toxicity of these vitamins and minerals, which can happen with supplementation. Vary your diet. If you're otherwise healthy, you will not have a vitamin or mineral deficiency 
if you vary your diet using the rainbow colors that nature has presented for you. In the food tutorials that I do, I try to put the vitamin and mineral content of the ingredients next to it, just to give you an idea of how a varied diet can contain a whole host of different micronutrients. The internet is a soup of information with lack of clarity, so I hope this little section has given you the backbone of information on micronutrients that you can now add to. If you have any specific questions about conditions or medications that you're on and how diet may impact on that, I strongly recommend you go see your doctor. And if I happen to be that person, then come and speak to me. I really hope you enjoy watching this video and subscribe to the channel. Happy spinning, clapping, laughing, dancing in the blackness of magic. Get it, have it, bag it, throw yours.